he could be, I'm not saying it's going to be, the beginning of disintegration of the European Union uh, or the Eurozone. You know, uh, at some point in the future, the Scots might uh, decide to go for another referendum and it may be the breakup of the United Kingdom. Then the Catalans in Spain might say, me too, and that might lead to a breakup of Spain. Some of the Nordic members of the European Union might say, uh, without the UK, the European Union is mostly the Eurozone, so what's in for me, Sweden, Denmark, and so on. And as we know, there are lots of uh, uh, economic and political fragilities within the Eurozone. There is austerity and reform fatigue in the periphery. There is bailout fatigue in the core. There is a rise of uh, extremist uh, populist parties of the extreme right and extreme left, uh, both in the periphery. There'll be a huge amount of uncertainty and the Europeans will have to figure out whether they want to go towards a more integration of Europe uh, and more integration of the Eurozone, even if uh, the voters are becoming increasingly skeptical about giving power to Brussels and the center, or whether there'll be more variable geometry and less more autonomy of nations within Europe and the Eurozone, but then having less of an integration that might be needed to have a complete the monetary union. So I think these sets of economic and political uncertainty is going to bear on economic growth, are going to bear down on financial asset prices, and they're going to create a significant amount of uncertainty. I don't expect a global recession or another global financial crisis. Uh, I think that the shock that comes from Brexit uh, is significant, but not uh, of the same size and magnitude as the one we had uh, in 2007, 8 and 9. Uh, however, I would say is a major significant financial shock as the reaction of the markets on Friday suggested. It creates a whole bunch of economic, financial, political and also uh, geopolitical uncertainties. Mm -hmm.